Welcome again. It's health. And of course, another lesson in how to pronounce Yoruba names by Dr. Bonjubola Abiri. Am I correct, Doctor? You did great. Thank you very much for the lessons every single day. Just before health, we always talk about you know, how to pronounce uh, Yoruba names. Can you correct uh, my director? His name is Olamide, and he's okay with us calling him Olamide. What's the correct one? Bonjubola. No, Olamide, no. Olamide. Olamide. Mm -hmm. Olamide, can you hear that? And everybody <laughs> called Olamide. Olamide. My blessing has come. All right, let's do health now. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you. Last week we talked about mental health and we thought we we're going to extend it up until this week and talk about mental health in the workplace. It was such a very enriching conversation that this is very relevant currently. So workplace stress is often uh, something that we relate to depression at the end of the day, whether we like it or not. Once you're stressed, so you go into some sort of depression. But how can we handle the pressures of being at work um, the uh, uh, consistency of it, uh, and also coping with our mental health, our mental uh, stability. All right, so it's good to be back this morning again talking mental health. Thank you. And I think a good place to you know, take it from would be to tell us again what mental health is. Mm -hmm. Mental health is an individual's ability to successfully perform the functions of the mind, the functions of thought, of emotion, of cognition, of perception, of feelings, and of behavior. Now, when we look at mental health in the workplace, it's important to know that work is good for mental health. Work mm. is good for physical health. I mean, with work, you get financial you know, gratification. Mm -hmm. With work, you get satisfied, you're motivated. It makes you a part of a certain community. However, while work is good for health, a negative workplace is detrimental to mm. our health. And as adults, it's important that we note that we spend a third of our lives at the workplace. Mm. And so we, whatever the unique pressures that our workplaces bring, so you work in the media space, you have unique pressures with the media space, you know, mm -hmm. negative news, having to come on air, regardless mm -hmm. of how it is that uh, you feel that morning yes. or what it is that you've heard, and still show up, show up, you know, as correct. My own, you know, industry has its own peculiarities. I have to deal with, you know, difficult patients, difficult cases, relatives who are looking up to you to mm -hmm. pretty much make miracles. So, you know, every industry has its own challenges. And with all of those challenges, I like to, you know, group the challenges into challenges with people, the people we work with, mm -hmm. different personalities, different energies coming to the workplace, mm -hmm. the place, so the work environment. I was in an office last week and immediately I walked in, I'm like, ah, ah, this mm -hmm. is the kind of place I want to work. The ambience was beautiful, aesthetics was great, the lighting was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But some people work in places that, you know, that are dingy, dark, all mm -hmm. of that can affect, you know, mental health. And the last is the processes. How do we do with the work that we do? Is there politics in the workplace? Is the politics, you know, negatively affecting us and all of that? So by the time you look at the people, the place and the processes, all of this can, you know, take a toll on an individual's mental health. And so when you look at the unique pressures and stressors of different workplaces, I think that one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves is to identify, one, the industry that we're in, and two, the kind of peculiar stresses and pressures that can come from that workplace. And also understand that if we are not able to identify and mitigate some of those pressures and stressors, our mental health can come under a lot of pressure. How do we mitigate against them? Because these are consistent yeah. uh, and the environment is often mostly consistent. The people are also consistent in their characters and, and behaviors and influence as well. So how do you mitigate any of these stresses if these uh, um, influences are consistent? Well, so again, we go back to aware, being aware, knowing that, well, this is where I work. So for instance, you know, my line of work is something that sometimes you may get attacked oh, physically. Wow. Yes. So I have that in mind when I'm sitting in front of a client. Sometimes when I sit in front of a client, I'm thinking for the purpose of whatever it is, this client could actually be recording this entire conversation. And that has happened not once, not really? twice, a lot of times. Because many times, you know, purpose? well, it's your word against theirs. Sometimes, you know, people want to feel like um, I want to listen to my doctor after I've left the room without mm. getting any permission from me. Sometimes mm. people want to. I remember one young man walking into my office one day. His sister had come in over the weekend and she had attempted suicide mm. at the time. And, you know, he walked in, into my office on a Monday morning. And the first thing he said to me was, you kidnapped my sister. I mean, wow. that's, that's a grave allegation. And so you can imagine what I had said. If I had said a certain thing, it may have been used against me. Mm -hmm. So, again, being aware that our, you know, workplaces have peculiar stressors, being able to identify the stressors when they happen, mm. and of course, not living in denial. Most importantly is also, again, coming up with coping mechanisms and styles to be able to cope. Mm. And so when I wake up every day, I know that each day brings a new challenge. Mm -hmm. if, if there were no challenges, it wouldn't be work. And mm. I, may, I, may not be able, I may not think about whether or not I would struggle. 
also knowing that I can come down with a quote-unquote mental health stressor, a mental health challenge, be it anxiety of, you know, being unable to perform or feeling mm -hmm. like I won't be able to do what is expected of me at work, be it depression, be it a post-traumatic stress disorder. It's interesting, you know, I spoke with a lady yesterday night and she talked about how it is that a very close friend of hers just lost his job mm -hmm. and she's remembering how it is that she lost two previous jobs. So sharing trauma, yeah. it's not her trauma. She's seen yeah. through the lenses of his, you know, his own eyes, but nonetheless, it's bringing back a post-traumatic stress disorder that she previously had. Of course, I shouldn't end, you know, without talking about the fact that depending on the unique pressures of our workplaces, people are also turning to substances of abuse. Oh, yeah. So prescription and non-prescriptive medication. So people are turning to, you know, sleeping medication. They're turning to um, drinks that have high caffeine. And they're also turning to alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, to mention but a few. Oh, wow. That's a lot just because of workplace uh, pressures. But walking into an environment like you've just said that has plenty of these stresses, uh, stresses what should I do to my mind when I'm uh, trying to cope? What should I note uh, and how should I, you know, address these? So one, know yourself. What are my stressors? What are my triggers? What are my threats? And when these things show up, because they will show up, how do I respond? Number two, be mentally aware. And so know that when certain stressors come my way, you know, this, apart from reacting normally, mm -hmm. I can have abnormal responses. So yeah. abnormal responses such as not sleeping well or sleeping mm -hmm. too much, not eating well or eating too much, or finding out that you're eating, you know, quite a lot of junk. Turn into substances of abuse or also mm -hmm. looking for aggressive ways to cope. So shouting, being unduly irritable, mm -hmm. or even being absent from the job. Some people, you know, when they're going through a lot of stress, how do they cope with work? They just say, you know what? Maz, I'm not having a good day. And I can't not, come I, Exactly. And then it so, starts to increase, of just, course. Just a second. <laughs> Allow me to. I can't show up tomorrow. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I, have to, I have to take care of this stress. Tomorrow is such a day <laughs> to show up. So, you know, absenteeism on the job. Uh -huh. Sometimes you find presenteeism. People are there, but they're given their barest minimum. Uh -huh. And, of course, you need to start talking about, you know, new concepts, such as quiet quitting. People show up, but, again, they give their... Barest. Barest minimum, minimum to the job. So different ways. Sometimes it's increased accidents on the job. Again, mm -hmm. if you were an engineer and you were working, maybe on a plant, mm -hmm. you may forget to push a button yeah. because you are overwhelmed yeah. in your mind. So depending on the industry, different... So when I notice things like that are beginning to happen that are also having a, a toll on my awareness, like I can't push that button, yeah. what do I do? Do I subtract myself from the situation? Do I find some quiet time? Do I... What do I do? Find people who I can talk to? Fantastic. So that's a very interesting question, especially because that sort of situation should have a multidisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. And so beyond you looking out for yourself, you should also have people around you who look out for you. Okay. And so if you come up not showing up like you do, you know, someone here should ask, you always show up correct. What's yeah. going on? Is there something not quite right with you today? Mm -hmm. Apart from, you know, loved ones, family and friends also looking out for you, there is the role of the HR. So again, we're calling on the almighty mm -hmm. HR. Yep. And yep. the reason why we're calling on the HR is because there are programs that are instituted in workplaces called the Employee Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. Programs that are, you know, confidential and specifically designed for people where they work so that people can get support. Beyond the work that people do for us is the fact that these people are bringing their full selves. Mm -hmm. And when they bring their full selves, you also expect that they are in a good place of health to be able to deliver on the job. Mm -hmm. So it's all hands on deck. No effort is too little, none too much. But everyone must be able to identify one, I know myself, I take care of myself, I cater to myself using healthy coping mechanisms. I rest, I exercise, I speak to someone, mm -hmm. I avoid drinking, I avoid smoking. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I, you know, I'm not in a good place, it's also important to talk to someone okay. who may be able to link me, you know, in the direction Is of Is it health. okay to be alone, to, 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 to find some quiet time alone in these instances? Well, of course, solitude, solitude. isolation, yeah. sometimes, you know will bring some form of tranquility. Uh -huh. However, you know, how we identify that someone is struggling with a disorder is that the symptoms start to increase in intensity, severity, and cause distress to the individual. So every once in a while, it's fine. However, if you see that it's becoming so, so much, frequent. so yeah. frequent, and it's affecting how you enjoy yourself, your relationships, your work, and your interactions with the broader environment, it might just be time to check mm. it. Dr. Bonjubola, thank you very much. <laughs> Once again, you've done done it, and we entirely enjoyed that session on mental health and the workplace. We're hoping that you guys also took plenty of samples from that one because it is essential that you show up tomorrow at work. HR doesn't care. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's essential you show up healthy. So make sure you take some of these tips 
and put it to work. Thank you once again, Doctor. We we'll look forward to seeing you next week. I won't give you a topic this time. I'll just let you bring something good. Not a problem at all. Thank you for having me. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back on Wake Up Nigeria.